back in the day, we're doing more unit multipliers, more conversions. This time we're using one that you did last year where we go between English and metric systems. And we'll also do some where we're just converting the metric units. We will also go back to some of those uh, chemical compound problems where we have the chemical formula. And instead of asking how much the sulfur weighs, we'll talk about what percentage of the total weight is the sulfur. So it's going to be exactly what we've done before, just one extra column, one extra step beyond what we were doing. So jumping into what we need to talk about, hopefully you guys know, you've seen it before in math and science classes, centi means if you take 100 of them, you get the main one 100 centimeters in a meter, 100 centiliters in a liter, 100 centigrams in a gram. Millimeters, there's a thousand of those in one of the full units, a thousand millimeters in a meter, a thousand milliliters in a liter, and so on. And then a thousand meters in a kilometer, a thousand grams in a kilogram. So give me a thumbs up. Are we pretty good with those? We've done them enough in other math classes and science classes that we're pretty comfortable with us. So first example, we're just going to convert within the metric system. For this one, we have linear units, not any square units to worry about. So we simply need to start off with 15,740,000 square centimeters. Make sure we're putting that with the numerator. And then we need to convert that to kilometers. I have centimeters, so I need to get rid of centimeters. They go in the denominator. What will I do first in the numerator? What am I converting to first? I don't have one for going straight from centimeters to kilometers. Madeline? Perfect. 100 centimeters in one meter. However, I started off with square centimeters. And that's a linear multiplier, so I need two of those multipliers. And if I square that, and then instead of writing it on the outside, I'm going to put it where I square everything on the inside, the one, the meters, the hundred, the centimeters. Then I have square centimeters that cancel out, and I know I have 100 squared in the denominator. So now I have meters. I need to get rid of meters and get kilometers. What multiplier do I need to use for that? How are those related to each other, Charlene? Perfect. 1,000 meters in one kilometer. But again, I had meters squared, so I need two of these multipliers. So I think of that as everything inside there squared. And then the square meters cancel. Let's write it neatly. How do we enter it on the calculator? 15,740,000, not squared in the numerator. I don't need to worry about those ones. In the denominator, I have 100 squared, and I have 1,000 squared, and my only re remaining units are kilometers squared, so I need you guys on your calculators, raise your hands, tell me what this equals. And we may get this in a couple of different forms, depending on the settings on your calculators. McKenna, what did you get on yours? Anybody else getting 0 0.157 or 1574? Anybody have your calculator where it's giving it in scientific notation right after that? Okay, it would have been fine if you had also said 1.574 times 10 to the minus 3, just depending on your calculator settings. So thumbs up down in the middle. How do we feel about that example? Does it make sense? All right, next one. When we go between English and metric, 
2.54 centimeters in an inch. We only do the two decimal places on that for the multiplier, but that's what we use. So if we're going between kilometers and miles, that's going to be going between the metric and English systems. We'll have to use this multiplier in that. Any time between English and metric or metric and English distances, this is the multiplier we're going to use. So let's do an example where we use that. We want to start off with our 32 yards. That goes in the numerator. And so we need to get rid of yards. So who can help me change those yards to feet? Yep. So three feet in one yard. Now we have an answer in feet. I'm trying to get where I can convert with inches. So now I need to change those feet to inches. And who can help me with how many feet and inches are equal to each other? I should see every hand popping up on that. That should be a pretty easy question, Pascal. So 12 inches in one foot, and now we have it in inches. So we're going to be able to use our new multiplier up there. So then we get rid of the inches. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. And any time you use this multiplier, think about it. An inch is about this big. A centimeter is about this big. It takes a couple of centimeters, about two and a half of them, to make one of these. Don't write it down as 2.54 inches are the same as one centimeter. Think before you write. Okay, now I have this in centimeters. Now I just need to get it to meters. So what multiplier do I use now? Who can help me with that? Upper. 100 centimeters. So 100 centimeters in the denominator. And what in the numerator? Everybody good with 100 centimeters and the meter are the same as each other and we need the centimeters in the denominator? So now our answer will be the meters that we want. Let's write down how we enter it on the calculator. 32 times 3 times 12 times 2.54 all in the numerator. 100 in the denominator. I think I got all of them up there. And raise your hands when you have typed that in on your calculator. Morgan, what did you get? Anybody else getting 29.261 meters? Okay. How many of you, instead of doing it this way, have memorized yards and inches as one conversion? 36 inches in one yard. So if you wanted to, to get rid of the yards, you could have said one yard was 36 inches, you could have done it without one multiplier instead. Everybody good? Okay, this time we're going to do square kilometers to square miles. It's going to get kind of long, but we can do it. So we need to start off with our 0 0.073 square kilometers. And we need to get rid of kilometers. We need to get to miles. So we're going to take those kilometers down to centimeters so we can use our 2.54 centimeters in an inch and then go from the inches back to the miles. So help me out here. How many meters and kilometers again, Emma? So 1,000 meters in one kilometer but I really need kilometers squared. So I need two of those multipliers, which means 1,000 squared, the meters squared, the one squared, and the kilometers squared. Then the kilometers cancel, and now I want to get rid of my 
square meters, I'll start with what's my multiplier for meters. So I'm trying to get to where I can use 2.54 centimeters in an inch. Austin, what do I know about meters and centimeters? Perfect. 100 centimeters in one meter, but I need square meters, so I need two of these multipliers, or 100 squared centimeters squared, one squared meters squared, and the meters squared cancel. Now I have square centimeters, so now I can use 2.54 centimeters in one inch. But again, these need to be square units, so I need two of the multipliers, so I need all of this squared, and then my centimeters, my square centimeters cancel. Now I need to go from inches to miles. What's the first multiplier that I'm going to need to use to get there, Caleb? I'm trying to get from inches back to miles. What do I do first? How many? What? So 12 inches and the denominator, so it'll cancel one foot. Once again, we need inches squared, so we need two of these multipliers. Everything is squared. Now we have square feet. Final multiplier, if I want to get rid of the feet, how are feet and miles related? Madeline? Perfect, 5280 feet in one mile, square feet, so I need to square this multiplier also. Now let's neatly write down what you're going to quickly type in on your calculators and then raise your hand. The 0 0.073 is not squared. A thousand is squared. A hundred is squared. And that's everything I think in the numerator. Denominator, the 2.54 is squared. The 12 is squared. The 5280 is squared. And that leaves us with square miles. Type this in all at once on your calculator, control divided by, fill in all of that in the numerator, all of that in the denominator. Do not do it piece by piece. That takes too long and makes you run out of time on a test when you are doing all of that. So are we just about there on getting it all typed in? Morgan, what'd you come up with? 0 0.028, and I'm going to do one more to make it have three significant digits. Thumbs up. Are we getting that? Are we good with that? Anybody with questions on our multipliers? I'm going between English and metric. All right, then let's do one of these weight combination by percent problems. So we have carbon tetrachloride, which is C. CL4 for our total compound of CCL4. I know that the atomic weights of each individual element, 12 and 35. This carbon is one of carbon, so 1 times the 12 is 12. 4 times 35 is 140. Add those together, and I have 152. Problems we've done up to now have said, if there are so many grams of carbon, what's the total weight? Or if there's a total weight of this much, how many grams of that is carbon? Now we're going to do, instead of that of actual weights, we're going to do just the percents. So we want to know what percent is carbon. So here's carbon, so I put an X in that row. And what do I know about my total percent, everybody? It's 100%. I don't need that middle row anymore. All that I need are these two rows. I write down that the 12 over the 152 is X over 100. Write down the cross product. Do not go ahead and do any calculations. I've got my X there. Then divide both sides by 152. So X is 12 times 100 in the numerator, 152 in the denominator. Type that in again with the control divided by. 
and let me know what you get. Raise your hand when you have that. And Bryce, what did you get? You did 12 times 100 over 152. Kit, what do you have? Anybody else? 7.895? Tell me what were we finding, because I need to label that. What was my question in the problem? What? That was my percent of carbon. Make sense to everybody? Questions from anybody? 